very interesting story in the uh, Telegraph today by the writer Christopher Howes concerning the fact that the uh, Conservative and Liberal Do Democrat coalition agreement drafted up between Cleggie and Cameron um, states, in the interim, Lord's appointments will be made with the objective of creating a second chamber reflective of the share of the vote secured by the political parties in the last general election. As Christopher Howes rightly points out, if the proportional representation system is to be imposed directly on the House of Lords, then there are 12 members of the BNP who are entitled to sit in the House of Lords as Lords. I have informed Mr Nicholas Griffin this morning that I intend to put myself forward as one of the peers and I anticipate that I will be known as Lord Lee John Barnes of Chatham. Now, as in anticipation of this event, I have already drafted up a serious manifesto which I will be promoting in the House of Lords to allow the House of Lords to be more representative of contemporary British society. Um, so I will now detail and read out to you my manifesto for change to bring the House of Lords up to date once I am given the ermine. 1. I will build a McDonald's in the House of Lords so the posh knobs who live on their vast country estates in their lovely little secluded oases of tranquility can experience for themselves the American cultural and corporate domination of our high streets. Personally, I am sick of seeing family-owned shops being shut down and Starbucks being open full of skinny latte-sipping idiots. American corporate domination has turned all our towns into bo boring, sterile US corporate occupation zones. So therefore, in order to be representative of the degeneration of British society and the British high street, a McDonald's must be built within the House of Lords itself. Secondly, point two, I would wear Burberry and Stone Island clothing in the house instead of fur and ermine. This would make me more representative of the people of my constituency um, as Lord Barnes of Chatham. Along with this, I would demand that my coat of arms and crest of office would be two bulldogs on either side of a can of tenants and a teenager in a hoodie pushing a pram. This is being done in order to depict the people of Chatham itself. If anybody wants to take a trip to Chatham and have a walk down the high street, you will notice that that is what you will see when you walk down the high street. So that will be my crest of office. Point number four, I will bring back Julian. I've always been a fan of Julian, but obviously we can't use real bullets. So I would bring it back with paint guns and rubber baseball bats to bring it up to date. So if anybody in the future gave you any jip in the House of Lords, we could say to them, right, Sonny Jim, get outside and let's have it. Don't just give it large in the chamber, you're going to get a slap outside. That will bring the House of Lords back up to date and restore what I believe some honour to a dishonourable institution. Point number five. I would invite a load of gypsies to park their caravans on the forecourt of the House of Lords so that they can experience for themselves the enrichment that we have to live with when they turn up in our communities. A few caravans, a load of yapping dogs, four by four vehicles with no tax on, that would, uh, all living on the car park in front of the House of Lords would allow the Lords themselves to experience what such lovely enrichment is for themselves. Point number six, I would invite in as many illegal immigrants as can be found and as possible to sleep and actually live inside the chamber of the House of Commons so the, the lovely lords and ladies can experience for themselves what it's like to live next door to a load of immigrants and asylum seekers. I believe they need to be enriched just as much as we're being enriched in working class communities. I think it would be very good for them. Num point number seven. I would play the Islamic call to prayer five times a day in the chamber at the loudest volume possible so the lovely lords and ladies would know what it's like to live next door to a mosque for themselves. Rather than living in some posh country estate where the only sound they hear is the sound of sparrows and blackbirds twittering away in the morning, they would have to live, they would have to hear for themselves what it's like to live next door to a mosque. Point number eight. 
I would turn the House of Lords into a nightclub and lap dancing club open till 4am in the morning so the poshies would know what it's like living in a street with a nightclub or a lap dancing club given a license to be opened until 4am in the morning. It's not very nice, so they would have to experience that as well. I think that would be good for them. Number nine. I would make all the bishops in the House of Lords wear pretty red frocks with a picture of Che Guevara on them and a hammer and sickle of the Soviet Union so everybody knows what they truly are. No more of this pretending to be Christian and wearing a cross. You will be wearing a little nice necklace with a hammer and sickle on and walking around with a big poster of Che Guevara. Everybody will understand what the Church of England has become that way. Number 10. During the World Cup, I would demand the entire House of Lords be festooned both outside and inside with England flags and that only lager be served and that the football should be shown on a widescreen TV in the chamber. That way, they would understand what most people will be doing in the real world during that time period. Number 11. I would make smoking fags in the chamber compulsorily. In other words, I hate the fact that England has banned smoking in pubs. I think it's turning our country into a sort of Taliban republic. Disgusting. So therefore, as I say, I would make smoking fags in the chamber compulsory for everyone. And for my American fans who are listening to this broadcast, when I say fags, I'm referring to cigarettes, not sodomites. Number 12. The only food to be served in the canteen would be chicken Twizzlers, chips and pizzas and coke to reflect the diet of the average Briton. No more of this venison and veal, etc, etc. They would have to live on Twizzlers, chips, pizzas and coke like everybody else who's a working class person. Number 13. All rich, posh, public ex-schoolboys in the house who inherited their title as lords would be forced to wear a big dunce's cap saying, I inherited my wealth and power just because I was the one sperm out of 40 million that made it to the egg. That way, everyone will understand that the very principle of inheriting your wealth, status, money and power is utterly pathetic. These people don't deserve respect. They deserve mockery. I want to build a meritocracy, not a society based on the fact that you were the one sperm who managed to find the egg, which in the case of Baron Bethel is amazing itself. Number 14. I would throw Baron Bethel of nothing British about the BNP into the Tower of London and give his butler a peerage. I believe that the real power behind the throne of Baron Bethel is his butler, and that man himself needs to be rewarded with his, um, basically, his skills. Right, moving on. Point number 15. I would bring back hanging, drawing, and quartering, and the gibbet, especially for those who are politically correct and who adopt pathetic, cringing, politically correct attitudes. I would also apply the death penalty to anyone who had ever been in the Bullington Club and anyone who would be convicted of such a crime if they were to be spared the death penalty would be forced to be put in the stocks every weekend in perpetuity simply for being a posh, overprivileged twat. Number 16. I would allow David Cameron and Nick Clegg to formalise their gay marriage with a civil partnership ceremony in the house itself. After watching them at their news broadcast yesterday in the, uh, as, as they signed this agreement, I thought to myself, they make a lovely couple, don't they? Don't They really do, don't they? D- David and Nick, wonderful. Oh, So as I say, I will allow them to formalise their gay relationship with a civil partnership ceremony in the House of Lords itself. Number 17. I would ban the BBC from reporting in the House and only allow ex-members of the East German Stasi to work for the BBC in the House of Lords, as that way everyone will finally realise and see that the BBC really are all commie and lefty bastards. So therefore, that's my manifesto for change to bring the House of Lords up to date. I believe that this will create a truly reflective House of Lords, which is reflecting our society and the people in our society itself. So hopefully you would agree with me. If you have any suggestions on how we could bring the House of Lords truly up to date, then please let me know. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Stay alive.